Hi Tinfold, my name is Brad and I'm from Aurora. I've been really struggling with question 5 on um, cystic fibrosis and I was really wondering if you could help me out. Thank you so much. Ah, cystic fibrosis, that's a disease, it's a genetic condition that causes a buildup of thick sticky mucus in the lungs, the pancreas, the liver and the intestines. Study the diagram below of two families that carry the cystic fibrosis gene. The letter N and N are used to represent the alleles. Okay, so let's see here. So we've got family A, we have family B. There's generation 1, <coughs> there's generation 2, and here's generation 3. Okay? Now, all these people don't have cystic fibrosis. This one does, so it'll have to be two recessive alleles. And this is two recessive, and that is two recessive alleles. We already know that. Now, remember, in order for these two to make to, to be an A, an eight, it means that one and two must be heterozygous. Okay. And in order for 13 to have two recessive alleles, it means that six and seven, the mommy and the daddy, must be heterozygous. And the same applies to. 11 and 12, they must be heterozygous, okay, because you need one from mom, one from dad. Let's look at our questions. Ah, wow, define a gene mutation. Well, that's easy. It is, it is a change, and I'm writing this in capital letters, and you must, must, must know this. It is a change in the DNA sequence, okay, that results in a altered, different, changed, altered trait or characteristic, okay? That is exactly what it is. So, do you remember when we did protein synthesis last week? And I said to you, that if one nitrogenous base, just one little base, is changed in that little triplet base set, what happens? You get a different amino acid. It codes for a different amino acid, which will code for a different protein. So it's very important that it stays the same. And you know something else. You know what causes mutations? The two main things that cause mutations. One is when um, the environment, something happens in the environment. So maybe there's radiation, maybe there's mercury, maybe there's asbestos. All these things will change and alter the genetic makeup. That's number one. So the environment can cause a mutation, but also, very importantly, is when the DNA replicates. Not when you have proteins, so, so not transcription and, and translation, it's during replication. So when it replicates, there's a little bug that happens and chips, there you go, you have a mutation. Mutations can be uh, uh, um, mix, fixed, which means they're good. Lethal means they kill you. And neutral, they sit there waiting. And the minute circumstances change, they can again then become lethal or fixed. If they're fixed, it means they're passed on to the next generation. Okay. Let's see, name the type of diagram, oh no, people, name the diagram that's shown above, wow, 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 pedigree diagram, I mean, what an easy mark, how many generations, we, I counted them with you, there are three, okay, using evidence from the diagram, explain why the gene for cystic fibrosis is a recessive allele. Okay, I can't remember what the numbers were, so let's just quickly check here. Okay, so it's 8, 13, okay, this one doesn't have a number, so 8, 13, and 15. So this is what you write, and you'll say, okay, individuals eight, thirteen, and fifteen um, all have the the disease. Okay. Therefore, their, each parent must be carrying the recessive allele. OK. 
Okay, each parent must be carrying a recessive allele. If people, look here, if the parents had two recessive alleles, then it would be shaded. They would be affected. They are not affected. So all of this is an example of complete dominance. Okay, so what is complete dominance? It means that when it is homozygous for the dominant and heterozygous for the dominant, this trait, the dominant trait, will come through. This will be expressed. Okay, it is complete dominance. So, for this baby to be there, Parents had to have one recessive allele each. For this one, they had to have the recessive allele for each. And that's all you're putting here in words. You're saying each parent must be carrying the recessive allele, but they do not um, express or show, express the disease. Therefore, it must be a recessive allele. Okay, there you go. As simple as that. Individual 9 and 10 are expecting their second child, X. Use the genetic cross to show the percentage chance of the child having cystic fibrosis. Okay, so what is 9 and 10? Let's quickly check. 9 and 10, so they must be heterozygous. Why? Because we know they've got a bubba here that is affected. So they want to know with X. So we're going to quickly do this cross. Okay, people, and this is where you get your marks, all right? So let's just zip this up. There we go. So we start. P1, the phenotype. What do we have? We've got um, a normal male. times a normal female. Okay, they're normal, they look normal. That's their phenotype. The genotype, they are going to be heterozygous. So we're going to have normal male times the normal female. Okay, we have meiosis. These are all things you get marks for. So please, please, please make sure that you check everything I'm doing here. Okay, your Punnett square, our nine little blocks. We have our gametes. We have fertilization. Okay, now we have N, 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 N. Okay, there's my homozygous, heterozygous, heterozygous. Ah, oh, and here's the little bubba that chance, 25% chance that it's going to have cystic fibrosis. So, looking at this, if we have the dominant gene, or the, uh, sorry, the dominant allele, it immediately tells us here, so that means that it's going to be normal. Okay, whether it's in the homozygous or the heterozygous state. Okay, the only one time it's not is here. If a baby has that, the offspring has that, then it's going to have cystic fibrosis. So, what do we say? We say the F1, what is the phenotype? We're going to have three, one, two, three, three normal children, okay, and one with cystic fibrosis. But we haven't finished our question because look here, look here, it says, what is the percentage chance of them having a child with cystic fibrosis? Here's the answer. There is a 25% chance that 9 and 10 will have a child with cystic fibrosis. And people, seven marks in the bag. How easy is that? So now we've done complete dominance, we've done incomplete dominance, we've done uh, 
codominance. So we've done all the dominance that's possible and we've done sex linked. Okay, we are going to go for an ad break and then we're into our last bit. So shake those heads. I want fresh, 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 fresh brands, all right? See you in a few minutes.